Armando Hasurugan Biology and Medicine videos, please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group for the latest videos, please visit Facebook Armando Hasurugan. In this video we will look at the autonomic nervous system's response to shock. Shock is basically when the body, when the body tissues and organs are not receiving enough blood. Shock is characterized by a sudden drop in blood pressure. What we have to understand is that there are many types of shocks. They are the same in that the result is a decrease in blood pressure and also that there is not enough blood supply to body tissues and organs. In this video, we will focus on cardiogenic shock, which is essentially shock caused by the heart failing to pump blood around the body, which means that there is not enough blood being received by uh, body tissues and organs. This heart failing to pump blood out is most often due to myocardial ischemia. This is where the heart itself is not receiving enough oxygen, is not receiving enough blood. Let's take a closer look at myocardial ischemia first. So here we have the blood vessels that supplies the heart, called the coronary artery. The coronary artery supplies the cardiac muscle cells with blood. So here we have the red blood cells that carry oxygen. And so if we have a plaque forming in the coronary artery, there is a block in blood flow. And so little to no blood is reaching these cardiac muscle cells, resulting in ischemia. Myocardial ischemia can lead to muscle cell death because these muscle cells are not receiving any blood supply, any nutrients or energy. Therefore, if the muscle cells die in the heart, we have pump failure. And the heart is then unable to pump blood around the body, resulting in a decrease in blood pressure. Shock also means that there will be not enough blood supplying tissues and organs around the body. So there will be a decrease in oxygen and other nutrients supplying body tissues. Your body cells will begin to shift then from aerobic metabolism to anaerobic metabolism because it is not receiving any oxygen, any red blood cells due to um, the drop in blood pressure and the uh, failing of the heart to pump blood to the tissues. Anaerobic metabolism will result in an increase in lactic acid production. After a while, an increase in lactic acid will lead to acidosis, which is harmful and dangerous for the body. Now, because the body's tissues are not receiving enough oxygen, there will also be a decrease in ATP production. Why? Well, because oxygen is important in creating or producing a lot of ATP. With a decrease in ATP production, cells will and can die due to no available energy. So there is cell necrosis. Also, in shock, because the cells are not receiving enough blood and because there's bad blood flow, you have an accumulation of carbon dioxide, waste, essentially. Carbon dioxide can actually react with water in the body to form hydrogen ions and uh, carbonate. This is a normal physiological process, but if you have so much carbon dioxide, there will be a lot of hydrogen ions being produced, contributing or leading to acidosis, which as I mentioned, is very harmful for the body. Okay, so those are some of the problems that can arise with shock. And this also means um, cardiogenic shock. So let's go back to the heart, which is suffering from ischemia. So before we can see what the body tries to do in order to uh, compensate for this problem, for this drop in blood pressure and this bad blood supply, we need to know some ana an anatomical structures in the heart. The aorta, which leaves the left ventricle, forms an arch called the aortic arch. The first artery that branches off the aortic arch is the brachiocephalic artery, which then divides to form the right subclavian artery, 
and the right common carotid artery. The right common carotid artery then branches on again. The second artery that comes uh, from the aortic arch is the left common carotid artery, which then branches into two. The third artery that comes off the aortic arch is the left subclavian. Another important uh, thing to note are the nodes that actually um, orchestrate the pumping of the heart. They form part of the conduction system. So these nodes, these guys, essentially are the ones that stimulates the heart to keep pumping. Now, again, the left ventricle here normally pumps blood to the rest of the body through the aorta. But because this heart in particular is failing on the left side due to ischemia here, it can't pump that much blood out of the heart. When the heart can't pump much blood out, it means there is a decrease in what's called cardiac output. A decrease in cardiac output means a decrease in mean arterial pressure, which is pressure in the arteries. Now because there is not much pressure, this will cause a decrease in baroreceptor firing. So what does this mean? Well, we have these special receptors called the baroreceptors. These baroreceptors are stretch receptors, and we can find them here. Here they are called the aortic arch baroreceptors, and here they are called the carotid sinus baroreceptors. So baroreceptors are stretch receptors. When there is a lot of pressure, these receptors are stretched, and so they are stimulated, and therefore they will fire many signals, essentially. But when there is a decrease in pressure, such as what we see in shock, the baroreceptors won't stretch as much, and so they are not stimulated, and so they won't fire as much signals, essentially. And what does this mean? Well, Coming off these baroreceptors, there are sensory nerves. There is one sensory nerve called the vagus nerve, which receives information from the aortic arch baroreceptor, and it will send this information to the medulla oblongata, which is a region in the brainstem here. And then there is another sensory nerve that receives information from the carotid sinus baroreceptors called the glossopharyngeal nerve. And this will also send information, the signals, to the medulla as well. So the medulla oblongata is a super important place because within the medulla there is a cardioregulatory and vasomotor sensor. And we will learn more about it soon. So here we are zooming into the section of a medulla. Here we have a cross section. In this section of the medulla oblongata, we have the cardioregulatory center, which is made up of the cardioinhibitory center and the cardioaccelatory center. So here, and they're, they're even on both sides. So we have a, you know, on this side, we also have a cardioinhibitory center. So let's step away from this diagram and just try to understand what the body will try to do when there is a decrease in baroreceptor firing due to a decrease in mean arterial pressure. So the goal is to increase mean arterial pressure. So when there's a decrease in baroreceptor firing, two things will occur in the medulla. First is that there will be uh, activation of the cardioaccelatory center and vasomotor center. And at the same time, there will be an inhibition or inactive or uh, unactivation of the cardioinhibitory center. Now, the cardioaccelatory center is the sympathetic nervous system, the cardioinhibitory center is the parasympathetic nervous system. So, when there's a when the a cardioinhibitory center is not activated, 
there will be a decrease in parasympathetic activity. And so there will be a decrease in vagus nerve activity because the vagus nerve is the main nerve of the parasympathetic nervous system. So normally, coming out of the cardio inhibitory center here in the medulla, we have the vagus nerve, the motor vagus nerve, that travels from the medulla to the conduction system of the heart. And the aim of the motor vagus nerve is to slow the heart rate down. But we don't want to do this. So therefore, the sensory neurons that are coming to the medulla from the baroreceptors will actually inhibit the cardio-inhibitory center. So it will inhibit the motor vagus nerve from uh, working, essentially. At the same time, this decrease in baroreceptor firing will stimulate the cardioxylatory center. This means that it will stimulate the sympathetic nerve activity. And there is a there are few there is an early um, uh, there is an early and late response. The early response is that the sympathetic nerve will try to increase the heart rate, and also it will try it will stimulate the release of um, adrenaline and noradrenaline from the adrenal glands to cause vasoconstriction. So let's look at this at a diagram uh, to try to understand what's happening. So these baroreceptors, uh, these baroreceptor nerves that are uh, coming to the medulla will, at, will inhibit the cardioinhibitory center but at the same time, it will stimulate the cardioaccelatory center. So it will stimulate the sympathetic nerves. The sympathetic nerve will travel down the spinal cord to the thoracic uh, spine, and then it will go out from the spinal cord. It will synapse with another neuron in the sympathetic ganglion. This post-sympathetic neuron will then travel to the conduction system of the heart and will stimulate the conduction system of the heart to, to increase in heart rate. And therefore, an increase in heart rate will uh, cause an increase in cardiac output to increase mean arterial pressure. At the same time, the neurons, there are neurons uh, in another region of the thoracic, another sympathetic uh, neuron in the thoracic that will essentially go out and stimulate the adrenal glands which are found above the kidneys. It will stimulate the adrenal medulla of the adrenal glands to secrete two important hormones, adrenaline and noradrenaline. Adrenaline and noradrenaline will bind on receptors on veins and arteries. It will bind on alpha receptors on veins and arteries to cause vasoconstriction. It will cause vasoconstriction to the arteries and veins all over the body except in the heart and brain because it wants blood to flow to these areas. So what does vasoconstriction do? Well, vasoconstriction will cause an increase in total peripheral resistance and therefore it will increase uh, lead to an increase in mean arterial pressure because we want to increase mean arterial pressure right so going back to this small mind map we have the early response of the sympathetic activity which is increase in heart rate and also in, uh, uh, the release of noradrenaline and adrenaline to cause vasoconstriction and then we have a mid to late response. In the mid to late response, we have an increase in renin production as well as an increase in aldosterone uh, production. So what, are, what do these two molecules do? Well, going back to our spinal cord and sympathetic neurons, sympathetic neurons can travel down again to a region of the thoracic um, the sympathetic neuron will synapse with another neuron in the sympathetic ganglion. This postsynaptic, uh, post-sympathetic neuron will 
uh, travel to the kidneys and it will cause uh, the kidneys, it will stimulate the kidneys to release an enzyme called renin. Now, what does renin do? Well, renin will travel in the blood. Renin is an important enzyme to increase blood pressure. How does it do this? Well, the liver produces a molecule called angiotensinogen, which is a precursor. Renin will convert angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1 in the blood. Angiotensin 1 is not that cool, but angiotensin 1 can travel to the lungs where there is a um, high percentage of enzymes known as angiotensin converting enzyme. So when angiotensin 1 goes travels to the lungs, angiotensin 1 will convert to angiotensin 2 by angiotensin converting enzyme, ACE. Angiotensin 2 is a, such an important molecule in increasing uh, blood pressure. First of all, it stimulates thirst, which means that it will increase uh, blood volume, resulting in increasing blood pressure. It also stimulates vasoconstriction, it has it uh, if there's if there's so much angiotensin 2 being produced it will also cause cardiac hypertrophy which is long term but angiotensin 2 main function that is that is very important is that it actually stimulates the adrenal glands well actually it will stimulate the adrenal cortex of the adrenal glands the outer part to release aldosterone which is a hormone that will increase blood pressure. It does this by acting on the kidneys. Um, it, it, it causes the kidneys to increase potassium secretion, in so more potassium in urine, but it causes an increase in sodium reabsorption from, uh, from the nephrons. So an increase in sodium reabsorption means that more water is being absorbed, reabsorbed, which means that it will increase plasma volume, increasing blood pressure, which we want in shock. So there are all these responses occurring during shock from early to late stage. Another important thing uh, to mention would be that there is another um, uh, reflex, you can say, that the heart has, which is the chemoreceptor reflex. C, when there's a decrease in pH or there's a decrease in oxygen in the blood and an increase in carbon dioxide in blood, this will stimulate the chemoreceptors, or, uh, which are situated where the baroreceptors are. When these chemoreceptors are stimulated, they will actually stimulate the respiratory uh, center, which will cause hyperventilation, so you breathe quicker.